Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is the Tudor Queens Ranking. Now, I have read all of the Alison Weir books on the Tudor Queens and it's by far my favourite series on the, the Tudor Queens, although I don't own all of them. Yes, my Amazon wishlist will come, come at the end on um, my little comments descriptions bit because there are two books that I need. One I think I had and I gave it away and the other I borrowed from the library. But I have read all of them and I would like to repeat and reread the series because I think it's a fantastic, fantastic series of books. Yes, it's fiction, but it's based on non-fiction. I have read a lot of books on the Tudor Queens. I've read Philippa Gregory's books. I've read some other Alison Weir books. And I believe I've read other authors work on Alison, on the Tudor Queens. My daughter Mia has just studied the Tudor Queens last half term and just studied Henry VIII. And it, you guys know that it's one of my favourite eras in history. I can read and read and read that era. Never read too many. I need to get up my bum. I've got loads more Tudor Queen books upstairs that I need to read next year. And yes, I will be reading other books set in the Tudor era in 2022. There is an announcement coming up shortly of which books I'm going to be doing a read along for. But these, this video is centred around the Queens of King Henry VIII. Now, if you're in the UK, as Captain Cuts and Camera said, you grow up with the Tudor in part of the, your education. It was part of our growing up. It's a lot of it was in a lot of our history lessons. So me first certainly grew up knowing a lot about them. King Henry VIII is quite prominent in our education. It was quite prominent in my education. And where I live in Bracknell, there is a pub called the Old Manor. Any of you Bracknellites that are living here that know of it. And it was actually built around about the Tudor era. It's one of our oldest buildings in Bracknell. And it's got in one of the rooms in, in that we can sit in the restaurant side of it. It's got pictures of Henry VIII. It's got a lot of like history in it. It was one of the hiding points. They actually used certain bits of that pub to actually hide. It was some of the, like, the highwaymen hid in there. And Bracknell was just like a little go-through. So I think that's one of the things I love about the Tudor, that it is actually part of my hometown, my town that I live in now. Not my hometown, that, was where, that wasn't where I was born, but it's where my children have grown up. And I love going to the Old Manor. Yes, it's now a Weatherspoons pub and I don't, I'm not going to promote all that, but the history element in the pub alone, it's not so much the food that I go for now, it's to go and sit and we sit, me and my kids sit in the same place at the pub. We sit in the, that little hideaway bit. We look at the pictures of the Tudors and we talk about it. It's, history is what I love. And I've loved reading about all the queens. Now, I'm not saying I know everything. I will link below Julie from Hungry Bookworms channel because she talks a lot about the Tudors. She knows a lot about them and she's brilliant. She does choose Tember every September. I normally end up doing other read-alongs at that time, but, you know, I would need to support her read-along a lot more. But... Yeah, going forward, I know about this. So I'm going to start off with my least favourite. I've got this, obviously, six queens. My least favourite of the queens, down to my favourite, and explain why. Now, I've had this book ages. I need to get to it, guys. Remind me in January. I think I was going to try and read it for non-fiction November, but I'm now thinking, with my read-along with Gemma happening in January, this might actually match one of the prompts and... It would give me a good incentive to get through this Mahusid book. It was one of my chunky books I wanted to get to this year. Didn't quite get around to it. But this book is on The Six Wives of Henry VIII. And it's got some fantastic pictures in it. Um, I'll show you. I was planning to be organised. And it's got some pictures of the queens. And so we've got... There you go. If you can see that. That's Catherine of Aragon. Now, she was the first, obviously, queen. We've got Anne Boleyn. Oh, of course, isn't she the... Dangerous one. Where is Anne Boleyn? It's pictures. Why am I doing? I was organised, really. I was, guys. But yeah, Anne Boleyn. Or oh, yes, there's Anne Boleyn. In a minute, you'll explain where she ranks. Obviously, no, no, that was Jane Seymour. Sorry, yeah, Anne Boleyn's that one. There you go. So I've got pictures. This is what I love about this book is it has got pictures of the Queen. But let's stop rambling. Let's get on with it. So my least favourite of the Queens is actually. The fifth queen, Catherine, of ha Catherine Howard. Now, I will explain. I'm very torn. It, on another day, it may be between this and the other queen that's fifth place, are very, very close in rankings. But to me, Catherine Howard, 
she got beheaded and I felt for her at the end of this book. This book definitely gave me more information on her because I didn't know as much about the latter queens. I knew a bit about the last queen, a bit about the first, but sometimes you don't always hear about all of them. So this was this book's fascinating and it told me a lot about Catherine Howard and she was played by her relatives. A lot of her relatives manipulated her situation so she became the queen. So she was the fifth queen and she basically took Anne of Cleves' place. She basically tried to steal the crown from her. Now, obviously I'll go into Anne of Cleves a bit later on in the, in the video, you'll find out where she's ranked. But Catherine Howard used her good looks. She was a very pretty girl. She was a very young queen. I think she was one of King Henry VIII's youngest queens that she got with him. She didn't love him. She loved someone else. That's obviously in this book as well. And she didn't love him. She knew that she was expected to marry him because of her relative, but she knew what she was going into. This girl knew that she wanted to marry the queen, king. She wanted to be her status. She wanted to play things. She was manipulative. She definitely had affairs, though that's been proven. And she knew how to manipulate the situation. She was as young as King, as, as, Mary, as Mary, King Henry VIII's first daughter. And I think if not younger, actually, she was actually a lot younger than her. And so that, to me, feels a bit dodgy anyway. Don't get me wrong, the age, some of the, what King Henry did was, he was a barker. King Henry VIII was a complete rat bag, let's be honest. But by the time she got with him, he was a big guy, very big, very disabled, and he could barely do the deed, I don't think, from what I've gathered. So she, but she sort of manipulated it. He basically worshipped the ground she walked on. He knew that he wasn't attractive. He knew at the time that he had his faults. And I think he did regret what happened to her. From what I've read about it, this, he regretted that he had to kill her, but he felt like he had no choice in the end. It was proven that she had affairs. It was proven that she was being naughty. And yes, she was a bit young to be killed off. And I, for that part, I feel sorry for her. But a lot of what happened in, in her life, she manipulated and she did know what she was doing. She is not the innocent one that she everything makes out from what I've read. I'm not saying I know everything, but to me, she was very young. She shouldn't have got into it. She shouldn't have let her family be pushed into it. And she did a lot of things that were wrong. So she is my least favourite, although I love this book and I love the colour of this book. So this book is gorgeous. My least favourite book, but the one about the queens I know. See, I would have said Anne Boleyn. I love her in the fact that she is, I know the most about her. She was the first queen to get beheaded. But what I've read about her since I've got reading more of the book, she used to be my favourite queen. But the more I've read about her, the less I like her. I think she was a fascinating character. And as for, you know, that side of it, she was a real she she's the most one of the most interesting queens don't get me wrong she is definitely one of the most interesting but she was the most manipulative little beep 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 going do you guys know about the fact that her sister aunt mary was actually the king's mistress one of his first mistresses and anne knew about this he had it's been proven i think that he had two illegitimate children with mary her Anne's sister and and I think from what I can gather, Mary really did love Henry. I think that was a that was a genuine love, and she didn't like loving him because she knew what she was doing was wrong. But she did love him, and Anne manipulated it and took Henry off of Anne, off of Mary. She took him off of Catherine of Howard, Catherine of Aragon, the first queen, and she was such a manipulative little beep beep beep. She was horrible. And the more I read about her, the less I like her. She was the most manipulative so-and-so. Horrible to everyone. She manipulated her brother as well. I don't know. There is lots said about her relationship with her brother, George. And I think, I don't know if that was a pure relationship or if it was incestual or what. But some of the things I read in this book was icky. If they really happened, if she was incestuous with her brother, then that is icky. She kept trying for babies. I don't know how, like, like I said, there's rumours that he that she had a child that was malformed. I don't know quite how with how much that's rumours and how much that's fact. I'm not, don't quote me, but that's in this book as well. She had loads of miscarriages. She did lose lots of children and I felt for her. I felt for her in that part, but she had Elizabeth and Elizabeth obviously ended up being one of our greatest queens ever and I still love Elizabeth. And for that part, I think Anne's brilliant because she created Elizabeth and yeah. 
And I felt for her, obviously, that she got killed when Elizabeth was very young. And that side of it's sad. But, yeah, from what I gather, a lot of Anne's faults came in the end. She manipulated a lot of situations. And I think she deserved what she got being beheaded. She's the one that deserved the beheading in some ways more than Catherine Howard. But she was very, very manipulative. She knew what she was doing. And it is rumoured that she did really love Henry, but I don't know how much of that. I don't really know how much she really loved her. And she didn't know that he would do the beheading. She was the first queen that got beheaded. So, yeah, I think any given day, I could tear between these two as being the least favourite. But Anne Boleyn is fascinating, so I think that's why it kind of topped, she kind of topped Catherine of Howard slightly. Now, the third queen, is the book I don't have, one of the books I don't have, which is Jane Seymour. Now, obviously you all know the rhyme, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. She was the one who tragically died in childbirth. But she still only ranks third because, for starters, obviously she didn't really have a huge amount of, to do, like she didn't obviously have the, the longest marriage with Henry. But I believe she did kind of get manipulated. A lot of the queens did get, pushed into the marriage with Henry by their family. And I found the Jane Seymour book quite interesting, but again, not interesting enough. She doesn't, she wasn't manipulative, not really. She could have kind of played on it in the fact that she kind of knew she was taking Henry off of Anne Boleyn. I think their brothers and things, and I think her brothers were a bit icky from what I've read about them. I don't really like the sound of them. I don't really like the sound of the Seymour family, to be honest. Obviously, she did love him. I genuinely believe that's why she's ranked third, is that she genuinely loved Henry. She didn't mean to. She didn't know if she would, but she genuinely loved him. And for that part, she was innocent. She tragically died not long after childbirth, I think. And we all know she died after giving birth to Henry's only living son, although she, he was a weak boy. He didn't last but lived very long. And that was sad, you know, to die when you only just had your child is sad. But she did manipulate Henry. She did kind of get a bit, little bit. She knew she she knew he was married to Anne, but she played the innocent one. She was very much, I am so innocent. I am so perfect. I'm so different from Anne. And she was. She was innocent. She was a lot purer than Anne. She believed in different things to Anne. And she kind of tried to get Henry back to the Catholicism, base which which Anne took him away from. And Anne sort of tried to get him to. Um, set up the Church of England and so that they, he could get divorced and so there was a lot of religious elements sort of played in from what I can gather from uh, what I've read about Jane she was very good to King Henry's first two daughters she was a lot nicer to them she made them feel happy she gave them their brother and she was quite sweet like that but she was very sweet and very I think potentially interesting she was all right and I think you know that's why she was kind of ranked in the middle because she's definitely in the middle don't dislike her but I don't love her I don't find her fascinating now on to the book no that's the number three yeah the fourth queen to me is Anna Cleves now some people would think why am I ranking ranking her below ranking her above Jane and that's because I don't think any of what she went through was her fault she really was pushed into marrying marrying Henry she didn't want to. She didn't want to leave her family. She didn't want to leave all the, her loved ones. She didn't have the easiest time. He married her because he got pushed into it because he was widowed. He was grieving. He was grieving for Jane. He loved Jane so much. And yet she she knew that she knew that she wasn't really supposed to marry him. And what happened to her was so sad. She got taken away from everyone she loved. She got put into a loveless marriage. He didn't love her, he barely, but he took one look at her and I don't even think, from what I've read, that they did anything. I don't even think they did do the deed. I don't genuinely believe that they did. And she was the Queen of Secrets. Now, as to, I know in this book that it said that she did have a child, but that before he married Henry VIII, and that is debated. I don't know how much of that is true and how much of that is false, but that kind of did make this, this book really interesting. So I can't be saying that that happened because that's not been proven. But... Anne's past. Anne was very sweet. She was great to all of his kids. She thoroughly actually loved Mary. She tried to get, and what I loved about her was that she tried to get Henry to treat his daughters better. She was so caring to his daughters because obviously he worshipped his son 
but he'd pushed away his daughters. He basically called them both illegitimate. And a lot of what she did was great. She fought for them. She was kind. She was caring. She didn't deserve to get divorced. But he was, he ended up having a really brother-sister relationship with Anne. And I think that was one of the things I loved is that it brought, she, he seemed to, even though he didn't love her, he or like be, was in love with her. He found friendship and true sistership with her and he treated her actually better than he treated any of her predecessors apart from Jane. And I think that part was great. It was great to see the kinder side of Henry. And I think that was why, that was why Anne of Cleves rates highly in my book because she brought out the best in someone that she didn't even love. So that's why she ranks highly. Number two slot goes to a game that have book, Catherine of Aragon, Henry's first wife. Now, I probably know the most about her than I knew about any of the other queens. She was the first, so she was she went into it for love. She didn't at the start. I think she fell in love with him in the end because she was actually sort of meant, meant to be marrying Arthur. She married Arthur, her his his older brother. But that didn't work out and there is a rumour as to whether they did whether her and Arthur did consummate their marriage we don't know and whether there was a true relationship but from what I've read I think to me I think she loved Arthur again she was brought over to marry a royal she was brought over to marry Arthur and it, what happened was sad that he that Arthur did die very shortly after they got married I believe that King Henry the seventh was a I don't like Henry the Seventh. In fact, I dislike Henry the Seventh more than I dislike Henry the Eighth, because he was a manipulative. Oh, the way he treated Henry's mother. Oh my God, I hate that man. I cannot stand him. Henry's the Eighth. What happened? I can kind of see how he went from being a goodie to a baddie. He wanted his pretty. He wanted boys. He wanted the lineage. Lineage. He wanted a future, and he went into his marriage with Arag, with Catherine of Aragon for the best intentions. I believe that King Henry the Seventh tried on with Catherine of Aragon, and he, she wasn't having anything of it. So he ended up saying, "Right, you've got to marry Henry now, Henry the Eighth," who turned out to be Henry the Eighth. And they had a really loving relationship at the start. At the start, it was very nice, and Henry was very attractive at the start. He was very much in love with her. He would have he worshipped the ground she walked on in the end. She was slightly older than him, so she can he kind of looked up to her. And she helped shape the country. She helped shape a lot of things. And they went into their relationship with all the best intentions. Obviously, she didn't. None of the sons that she had with him lived. Same with Anne. None of the sons that she had with him lived. But she gave him Mary. Mary was one of the child short children that he really loved. And what did the bugger go and do? He started having affairs. First with Mary Boleyn. Then with Anne. Then divorced Catherine to marry Anne. And then denied their marriage. And she was a very strong Catholic, Catherine of Aragon. Very strong in her faith. And was like, no, what you're doing is wrong. And she stood up to him in the end. And poor, I don't know if she got poisoned or whether she died. But it was very sad what happened to her. And again, I think the it's very close in place with my rankings between her and, as you can well guess now, the first, the, my favourite queen. Yeah, she had it hard. I feel for her. And my favourite queen can't really show you that this is my because I got the proof copy of this the and this is Catherine Park she is my favorite of the queens and I love the book that I got sent by Tandem that's one of my favorite books ever sorry about the lawnmowers in the background but she is my favorite I don't know why again it could be very close in rankings between her and Catherine of Aragon but Catherine Park was fantastic she was already widowed twice before she married King Henry VIII Again, it wasn't a marriage of love. She didn't love him. He was older than her. She was she was actually in love with another guy. Which if you read the books, you'll find out who the other guy was. She hadn't had children. She hadn't had the she had a hard life before she even married Henry. Her first husband was a beep beep beep, wasn't very nice. Her second husband already had two kids, don't know if he wanted any more, and she wanted children. But that the second husband she I think she loved in the end, but not true love it was a kind of love relationship and she adored her two stepchildren she loved them and she fought for him and she but she still once he once he was once he when he died she wanted to marry this other guy but henry had taken a liking to her he'd seen her he'd taken a liking to her and he kind of pursued her and she, again you couldn't say no to henry the eighth but i believe she looked after him 
she took care of him she had his best intentions at heart yes i think she saw i don't know if it's rumors that she did have the affair towards the end but she went into it and she looked after henry in the end she was really loving to him really caring again brilliantly looked after his his other children his three children she was kind she brought the country together at a time when henry was basically he'd already beheaded two people she was scared she was scared stupid going into it he'd killed two people that she'd known she was actually a i think she was a lady in waiting to catherine of how catherine of aragon or she knew that again there was those connections there a lot of the queens were connected in what different ways but catherine of Parr had it hard and I think she, again, she wasn't manipulative. She wasn't horrible. She had a really good heart from what I've read and she's my favorite queen. So I hope you've all enjoyed this video. I don't know how many people are gonna watch it because it is Tudor at Queens and it's not everyone's type, but I love it. I love the queen. It will still be one of my favorite areas in history. I've got so many books. And like I said, next year, I'm gonna be reading some different Tudor books. So that'll be interesting. And the announcement's coming up very soon. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and not subscribed yet, ring on my ding a ling. And if you like this video, please go and check out Julie from Hungry Bookworm channel because she knows a lot about the Tudors. Take care, guys. Bye bye.